In 2008, the stock market collapsed and there was a recession. What if I told you there was one indicator that actually accurately predicted it? In fact, it also predicted the same indicator, the 2020 pandemic recession and even the early 2000s crash. That very indicator in fact has predicted every single recession in the past 50 years. And guess what? It is flashing red once again. What is this indicator exactly? And are we heading into one more recession? And with all that happening, how could you invest money right now? All that is coming up in today's video. Hello everyone, I'm Uday Nadde. I've been licensed in Indian financial services since 2015 and so far have helped over 1000 families make better financial decisions. And on my channel, I talk about all things money and personal development. So the indicator that I'm talking about is called the yield curve. Understanding it requires knowing how bonds work. And I know that bonds may seem boring, but there's a very common phrase in finance, trust only two things in life your dog and the bond market. So what in the world is a yield curve? So when you put money in say a fixed deposit, the interest rate that you get is much lower for a six month FD than say a three year FD. Similarly, when a bank or a government is giving a loan for six months, the interest rate is low because the risk is low. But if the same bank or government is giving a loan for 10 years, it would charge a higher interest rate because the risk over a longer time is much higher. That's why the yield that a 10-year government bond offers tends to be higher than the yield of a 2-year government bond. And the yield curve is essentially the difference between the yield of a 10-year government bond and a 2-year government bond. The yield curve is a positive number and it gradually slopes upwards, indicating that long-term bonds have a higher yield than short-term bonds. But there are times when it starts turning down and even becomes negative. Now this event is called a yield curve inversion. And that is when alarm bells start going off across the world. Now the two-year bond yield becomes higher than that of the 10-year bond yield because investors are worried about the near future. So they prefer to buy long-term bonds for safety, which makes those bonds more expensive and their yields start falling. At the same time, fewer people now want short-term bonds. So their prices go down and their yields go up. Why is this even a big deal? because a yield curve inversion has been a reliable predictor of recessions in the past 50 years. But if you notice, there's always been a time gap between the inversion of a yield curve and the start of a recession. The yield curve last inverted about 24 months ago in July 2022. The average time gap between a recession and an inversion of yield curve has been 12 months and in 2006, it was 22 months. Given all of this, how should you actually invest money right now? I'm going to share three strategies with you. First up, now that the yield curve has inverted, is a stock market crash and a recession coming soon? The honest answer is no one knows. And anybody who says they do is lying or trying to scam you. But we have to be alert because the yield curve inversion has not given a false positive in the past 50 years. So instead of trying to predict stock market prices, which is futile behavior, we should position our portfolio in the right way. That means making sure you're following a very solid asset allocation strategy that is right for you. Now, to figure out if it is right for you, I'm going to ask you one question and answer it very honestly. If the value of your investments in stocks and equity mutual funds drops by 30% and stays that way for two to three years, would that affect your day-to-day -day life? If you said yes, then unfortunately you are over invested in volatile assets like stocks or equity mutual funds. Now the reason I asked that question was because in 2008, the stock market fell by over 60%. And it took two years and 10 months for it to go back to its previous levels. Even after the 2000 crash of 56%, believe it or not, it took three years and 10 months to reach previous highs. The 39% COVID crash took only 10 months to recover. In fact, from 1986, the average fall has taken two years and four months to recover completely. So being prepared for that long recovery is essential because once we actually expect something, it becomes much more easier to deal with it. And such 30 to 60% crashes have taken place roughly every 7 to 10 years. That's why do not invest money that you need in the short run that is any time less than 5 years in an all equity portfolio. And I had made a video on short term investing ideas that I'm linking below the like button. So check it out later so you know where to invest for your short term goals. And I do know that this can sound very scary. 
But remember that there have always, always been issues happening in India and across the world that can potentially cause a stock market crash. In fact, just look at this fabulous chart from Funds India, highlighting literally every such event since 1980. As they say, there's always, always, always a reason to not invest. But through this entire period, and SIP's India's stock market over any 10-year period has given average rolling returns of 14.81%, which means 1 lakh invested would have roughly grown almost 4 times to 3.98 lakhs on average. The second question that you may have is, should you sell some of your profitable investments right now, wait for things to calm down and there to be more clarity and then invest later on. Now, the biggest problem with this particular strategy is that the stock market is irrational and it may keep going up while you're waiting on the sidelines and not investing your money. And with every passing week and every passing month, the market keeps going up and it becomes even more difficult to now invest your money. This is because of a psychological concept called anchoring. It is the tendency of the human mind to fixate on a specific reference point, like the price at which you sold an investment. So today, let's say you sold your investment and the Sensex is at 78,000 points. Now, our mind will start panicking if the Sensex doesn't go under it. At the same time, if it falls to 70,000, then we may want to wait for it to go down by another 5,000 points before investing. Now, because of this constant adjustment of your reference or anchor, you may end up paralyzed by the fear of making the wrong move, leading to very bad decisions. Like Warren Buffett said, the stock does not care what price you buy it at. That's why if you don't require money for any short-term goal, the best thing you could do is not to interrupt compounding. But if you want to book profit just to feel safer and less anxious, have a plan around it. So decide beforehand that every three years, you'll book a part of the profit you have made and move it into safer assets like bond mutual funds or fixed deposits. If you don't have a plan and try to time the market by constantly buying and selling, you are again interrupting compounding. And it's very difficult to time the market. For example, if you had invested 10 lakhs in January 2005, that would have grown over 14 times to 1.45 crores. But missing just the 5 best days when the stock market rose the most would have meant the value of your portfolio goes down to 92 lakhs. And missing just the 10 best days out of that entire period of almost 20 years would have meant having 68 lakhs. At the same time, the Indian stock market has fallen by 10% or more in 40 out of the last 44 calendar years, which once again underlines how volatile and risky investing in stocks is for the short term. The third and the last question that you may have is how to invest right now. If you're investing through an SIP, continue with it for your long-term goals. Because with an SIP, you're buying at different prices each month and the overall buying price tends to average out. If you want to invest a large one-time amount, then you could do one of the following two things. Firstly, if the amount is less than 3 months of your income or less than 10% of your total investments, just invest that in one go. If it's higher than that, you could use something called as a Systematic Transfer Plan or STP for short. In it, you invest your one-time amount into a safe holding fund, like a liquid fund that is not connected to the stock market. And then you set up an STP, which means you give the mutual fund a standing instruction to move a pre-decided amount into an equity fund on a particular date for a set number of months. And by the way, you can decide all these parameters. So it could look something like this. Let's say you want to invest a lump sum amount of 12 lakh rupees. So you invest that in the SBI liquid fund, which is not connected to the stock market. Now you start an STP of 2 lakhs for 6 months from the SBI liquid fund to the SBI blue chip fund. With that, SBI would automatically sell your investment worth 2 lakhs every single month on the date that you have decided and reinvest it into their blue chip fund. And STP helps you reduce your entry risk. Because if you think about it, if you invest in one go and then within the next month, the market falls by 10%, your investment of 12 lakhs has now actually gone down to 10.8 lakhs. If you have an STP and there's a market decline, you're going to end up investing at lower prices. On the flip side, you'll buy at higher prices if the market goes up. Now, more than anything else, with an STP, you minimize the chances of your portfolio suddenly dropping right after you invest, which can make anyone anxious. That's it for today and I'll see you around in the next one.